So I've sort of decided, yeah, sort of. I've sort of decided on what approach I'm going to take on this particular saw. And, and I stress I'm not familiar with these. I haven't done one before, so this is a person who kind of wants to work with me to develop a, a work saw build that's, you know, cheap and re repeatable. And, you know, I guess you really sort of have to go back to basics in order to, to even start the discussion. And I, I guess the easiest way to deal with something like this is just increase the compression. And the easiest way to deal with that is simply remove the base gasket. I checked the squish on this particular machine is 40 thousandths. I think I have a video of that. The base gasket is 20, so in theory if I pull the base gasket I've dropped that cylinder uh, 20 thousandths. And I really am not comfortable yet in doing a whole lot more. I guess I could pull another 20 thousandths off the flange and do a, a pop-up piston if I want to go to the next level. Um, I'm just not familiar enough. Uh, I haven't done that and I don't want to ruin a, a, a new saw. So the approach I'm taking on this one is something that's totally reversible. And that's the base gasket and the muffler mod. You know, so should it not be what the person likes? Um, bringing it back to stock configuration just means putting the gasket right back in it. Now I understand it's being a coward. Um, but there is a discussion that should be had because online you have endless discussions about what modifications bring what to the table. And if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you've got a lathe and porting tools, you want to sell porting. If you don't, you want to sell something that works without porting. The bottom line is some of the modifications you can do uh, are relatively simply return tangible gains. And like I said before, compression increase is one of them. You can go to a higher level of compression increase by doing things like a pop-up piston, um, decking the cylinder, and things like that that require machine tools. But you can get a perceptible change in compression by removing the base gasket. It usually ends up to be about 15, 18 pounds different on a saw of this size. Now, you get a couple of other things along for the ride. One, 20 thousandths usually ends up being about a, a degree and a half or so of, of uh, port timing. So by dropping the cylinder 20 thousandths, I'm going to pick up both up and down, I'm going to pick up a degree. So I'm going to actually increase the intake duration by about two degrees. Also, since the exhaust port has now been dropped at 20 thousandths, you're going to pick up a degree of, uh, of time in, in, in the power stroke, otherwise while the gases are still expanding. Now there's a blessing and a curse in that, and I know that's a really simplistic explanation. On the smaller saws, like the 40s and 50s, adding a little bit of timing in, uh, under pressure where the piston's under pressure sometimes makes sense. But as in all cases, these things are, are balances and there's a point of diminishing returns. So, you know, on this 576, um, one other thing you get when you delete the base gasket, drop that cylinder 20 thousandths, and now the distance from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder squish band, I don't know if you can see inside there, is reduced to the 20 thousandths range, is a subtle thing, and that is the charge the gas air charge that's around the outside of this piston in that squish band area as the piston moves up the top dead center gets squeezed into the combustion chamber itself and that actually increases the volume of that charge which actually gets burned therefore a slight increase in power so what you're getting with that base gasket delete that 20 thousandths it's not only higher compression but a little more of the actual charge burned versus just spit out the exhaust. Something to think about. On saws like the 562, 
and some of the new 372s, Husqvarna has already cut that squish band really nice. So you don't have to do additional machining like you might have to do in the old 372s. But again, the game here is not just a compression increase. It's also actually increasing the amount of the charge that actually gets into the combustion chamber that gets burned. So, yet again, um, if that squish is too high, there's this nasty spot where the distance is enough where uh, the charge gets in there, but also it's too large to squeeze it out to get combusted, but too small, and this is a very subtle point, for it to actually burn. So that whole ring of charge is wasted. Um, by doing what we're doing, we're squeezing it into the combustion chamber so it gets burned. I hope that clears that up. This is a bit of a research project. I've got two of these. They're going to get two different builds. This one here, the new one, is going to get a simple build. And using some fairly proven uh, techniques. And I believe, well I hope, will help this saw run a little bit snappier and make this person happy. But since it's a relatively new saw, I'm not really willing to risk doing things that aren't reversible. So call me a coward. Um, it's just I, in my heart until I have some time on these saws, I'm not interested in, in hacking them up. Now this one on the other hand, um, the one that's apart and in the table and in the, in the parts bench, that's going to be my research project and yes, it will be hacked up. Um, uh, that'll be a different video. A couple things I find interesting on the 576 is there are just a big beefy saw for what they are 75 cc's and i think i mentioned in in one of the prior shots i did of this saw that's just a lot of metal in that cylinder and um the cases everything about it's just a little bit beefier than the 372 series not sure the bearing size just yet they appear to be about the same as a 372 but just the castings and the surrounding structure of the saw so it's got to be heavier and it is I wish I had that scale working because I'd really like to put it on a scale and weigh it as compared to a, a 372, but also the MS660 that I've built out of Chinese parts. Because that saw doesn't feel a lot heavier, but it's a freaking animal. Better be careful what I say here. But anyway, let me get into this saw and just do the base gasket delete and kind of show you real time what I'm seeing as I take it apart. So in order to get access to the cylinder, I'm going to pull the handle off. I'll just put the screws right in the cover right for now. I do notice that it has this motion limiting device right here instead of down under like the 372s do. I don't believe there's much on this saw that will actually translate over to the other series. Maybe possibly a side cover, but it's, the rest of it is pretty much unique to this saw. The whole top end. And I took a couple of shots of this versus uh, a steel. This is a uh, 461 and you can see that the size of the castings are radically different. Which do you think is heavier? Yeah, no contest. Look at all that meat. But look at all the complexity on this. This still seems to have been able to get their efficiency requirements with a simpler design. That's to their credit. But look at that casting. Wow. I don't know if that asymmetric stuff is designed that way or not. But... This is actually a pretty lousy casting, guys. You can notice the similarities in the layout of the cylinder to the, actually all the new saws where they have the transfers to the front. And I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand the, the thermodynamics of it, but obviously capturing the heat from the exhaust has been a priority for a lot of these new designs. And notice the anti-vibes are very similar to the 372 series. Husqvarna has pretty much settled down on that. I don't know if you remember the video I did with the 395, where they were like vertical versus horizontal that way. Kind of an interesting concept. I noticed it's got these rubber bumpers right there. But the first impression I get when I'm working on this 
576, it just feels rugged. It has that very, uh, it's a much heavier feeling saw. This one's interesting, it's got like a, a nut. I'm going to try to leave the chain brake on if I can. I'm not sure I can, but I'm going to try. Yeah. It's got larger bolts to hold the muffler on than the 372 does as well. I mean, just pretty much everything about the saw is... heavier. I'm, I'm inclined to like it. One thing I can tell you regionally, the 576 has done better locally here in the hardwoods of central New York than the uh, 372 series has because people haven't had the same kind of bearing problems, you know, that they had with the first generation x torques Which I find interesting because I do believe that the OEM bearing that I just got for this is a nylon bearing, just like the 372. Basically, I want to disturb as few screws as I can. On this particular build. And I'm hoping... See, that's even bigger. Look at that. These anti-vibes are on this side. A lot of this of the bolts and stuff are just simply larger than the 372. Definitely a heavier built saw. I like it, you know? I like this saw already. You know, I'll take the extra weight if I get, you know, a corresponding amount of extra durability. See, theoretically, you've got this mess right here. So these two screws here pull the carburetor, but then I still have um, all this, there's three screws here for that junction to the cylinder that I have to take off in order to free up the cylinder. My question is, can I get it high enough where I don't have to detach all that stuff? I mean, is it possible for me to lift the whole cylinder and carburetor far enough up by itself where I don't have to disassemble this whole mechanism. Um, it's, it's worth, it's worth a, a try. Yeah, because I got all the pulse, I got all kinds of stuff in there that if I can get away with not disturbing it, I'm going to do that. Let me try it. Is it, what do you think guys? You can, you can chide me afterward, but I think it's worth a try. Her typical video protocol. If this looks ugly, I'm not going to show it on video, but I'd like to disturb as little gasket surfaces as I possibly can on a, on a, a new saw. Because you know the factory has them all torqued and it's all sealed and just the less disturbance I make I just have to believe is a better approach. If it'll work. All right. What I did was I gave up and pulled out the two shoulder screws that hold the carburetor, and then the two smaller screws down here. You got the two larger ones that go right there through the carburetor into the intake manifold. They go right into there. And then you have the two smaller screws that go into that that hold the butterfly, which is controlled by that arm. But I'm leaving that assembly pretty much intact. And I was able to get the cylinder off. And it's clean, you know. Get the... Now, 
I am not going to touch the cylinder because it's the most expensive part. I'm going to clean it up, but I'm not going to touch it with a die grinder. I'm going to leave it right put. What I am going to do is do my typical tube in the muffler, but I'm going to raise the back edge of that piston skirt just a little bit. What a heavy, nice, strong looking piston that is. And I'm also going to delete the base gasket. That's what this saw is going to get. 30 thousandths. I added 30 thousandths right there plus the 20. That's a 50 thousandths total to uh, opening the intake port just a little sooner. It's just a couple of degrees. You figure 50 thousandths. You know. The duration is going to be a little longer because it stays open longer. But the opening will happen, what, two and a half degrees sooner, and then close two and a half degrees later. So, and that might matter. I mean, that might make a little difference right there. You know, that along with the compression increase. I'm going to do a muffler mod. I do believe I'm just going to braise a tube on there. Yeah. This particular simplistic build, we used to call it the Farmer Jones build when Bob and I were having fun with the 350s, is something that no matter where this saw goes in the country, should it require work, whatever we've done is reversible, or if they just put in stock parts, uh, isn't going to really change the build that much. Going back to a stock muffler or putting a set of rings in there or whatever, it's not going to really change it that much. So... That's why I do this. If a person doesn't like it, they can put the base gasket back in. If they don't, they can leave it out. Either way, uh, it's a supportable by an average dealer and a supportable by an average mechanic saw when I'm done, even if it has a little bit more performance. Um, well, I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to shut the camera off and put the piston on, get the cylinder going, and uh, put that together. Maybe we'll fire it up. I don't want to do how-to videos. I want to tell you what I've done. Let you figure out how to, how to do it. You know, if you can twist a wrench, you can do this stuff. But it kind of bothers me when uh, people will try to micromanage how you pull a saw apart and put it back together. Because there's many ways to skin a cat. And a lot of it depends on what you have for tooling and uh, how much you want to get into the saw. I tried doing this without disassembling a lot of the bits and pieces of the carburetor. Just because I wanted to see if I could do it. Is that the right way? Maybe not. You know, I'm not going to suggest that's how you do it. All I'm doing is documenting what, in fact, I have done. And you can decide if it makes sense. I know one guy out there just gets all balled up about, you got to do things in a specific order. how graceful that was but we got it on and I'm gonna get my four cylinder bolts in there before I kind of lose the mojo you know I didn't really take apart much. So the question is, did it kind of settle back together in the right orientation? In particular, things like the pulse line, did it go back right in there? And it kind of looks like it did. It kind of looks like it went right back together. So if that's the case, well then this approach of not disassembling all the carburetor stuff and just pulling the cylinder saved me a lot of time. I think the key was taking the cylinder, sort of scooping the 
um, those strato hoses underneath the carburetor assembly. I think that's really what the key was to make that work. So what I'm going to do now is put in these screws, see if everything lines up properly, and it looks like it has came off. And then I'm going to do a muffler mod, and I'm debating on how, again, this is a saw that I really don't know as much about as I would like before getting into a project like this. You know, there's got to be a little humility in these things. You know, it's not like you know everything. You kind of learn as you go along the first couple of times. And that'll be better. So what I've learned is you got to make sure that the choke, the back of the choke goes into the bracket, which, uh, you know, is its basic uh, guides where it goes. All right. Let me set this back in there. All right, let's set it back down in its bushing and do a function test. Looks like it's good to me. All right. Time to tighten the cylinder down. So basically, the concept of taking those four screws, which releases the carburetor and the butterfly in the filter holder, um, and then taking the cylinder and sort of scooping it up and out works, and then putting it back in without disassembling things like the throttle cable and the linkages and fuel lines and vents and all that stuff. You don't have to on this saw. That's pretty cool. You know, it's a little awkward. You also don't have to remove that to get the cylinder off. This is to do a base gasket delete. So, um, this saw has a base gasket delete and it also has, uh, like I showed on the piston, I took about 30 thousandths and raised the added a little bit of intake duration by about, I don't know, a few degrees. All right, muffler. It's fairly open. That's, you know, a fairly small hole. And I suppose I can just put a tube right there. Let's see what I've got for room before I set the tube right in there. I see how far this chain break is. You gotta imagine it there. So it's not like I can just oh boy. I've actually got a I've got to make it come out like this. So it's got to be like this. So it's got to be a little bit out 45, 45 and down. So that's, if I do a tube, that's the way it has to be. And I'm really tempted just to close up the hole on the tube. 